Welcome back to Living 757. If cooking is your passion, Culinary Institute of Virginia is your place to visit. Check this out. The Culinary Institute of Virginia is the College of Culinary Arts of ECPI University. We offer diploma in culinary arts, three associate degrees, and a bachelor's degree in food service management. Uh, we assume that every student starts from scratch uh, with, with little to no experience. So the first day of class they're learning to hold a knife, to walk through a kitchen safely, and all the basics. Our mission is to prepare students for the food service industry. We offer a diploma program, uh, typically that is uh, more the uh, kitchen classes, the lab classes with some academics in it. For our associates programs, we offer an associate in applied science. And part of the associate in applied science is that the students will take 15 credit hours of general education courses, as well as management courses, culinary nutrition, culinary purchasing, and supervision. Now, students come to us with a really wide range of goals, everything from owning their own food truck to working in restaurants or resorts like Walt Disney World, uh, to being a general manager or executive chef. I am in the culinary arts program. It's a very like uh, general uh, program, giving you an idea of both the business aspect, um, the technical aspect, and not only just simply learning how to like do different cooking techniques, but how to manage a restaurant business as well, and understanding what really goes on in the culinary world as well. If you ask 12 chefs, what is a chef? you'll probably get 15 different answers. Uh, to me, a chef is that person that takes responsibility for everything that goes into the guest experience. And I have seen students in their second or third term, 15 weeks in culinary school, suddenly become a chef in that they gained that mindset. Our industry requires experience. Uh, with the degree and experience, uh, the student's career path becomes easier to follow. Every good chef, embraces education. Every good chef seeks more and more knowledge and that knowledge translates into them becoming better and better at what they do. Hospitality Support Services is a program that we run working with industry um, where businesses in need of temporary employees will contact us uh, to, to get them and students can then sign up to work those, uh, those temporary jobs. If a, a business is having a large event and they need three cooks and two servers, um, our students can then get paid uh, to go do those temporary jobs. We also have a career service department that ensures that the students have all the opportunities that our employers are trying to fill. One other ways that we engage students is we have a large greenhouse on campus. Uh, it has a mixture of hydroponic and in-soil uh, plants. Um, where students can uh, basically volunteer their time uh, to go work in there and learn how to grow things. We strive to ensure that students have the tools and skills necessary to be successful in industry. Our student body is very, very diverse. Uh, we have a number of students right out of high school, and we have some that have just been working in the industry uh, for a few years, and then many who are career changers, who has just been a dream uh, to always uh, work in or own a restaurant. Any of these students can be successful. Uh, so it's, you know, if, if your dream is to have a, a, a restaurant or work in one, um, it's, it's, it's never too late. I actually graduated from the School of, of Hard Knocks. Uh, so I started working in restaurant when I was 12. Uh, and then I didn't go to culinary school until I was 30. The education actually helps you understand the processes, apply the processes, and then with that, be able to become more and more creative. And that's another thing that makes a great chef is, is that, that creativity within what they do. But it starts with the basics. This is our art form. You, like any of the students behind me or any of the students around in this building, even the teachers may not be good at conventional drawing, painting, to advance stuff like woodworking or things of that nature. But by making the, uh, making the food that they do and presenting the way that they do, especially in the a la carte class when we're serving others, it, that in and of itself is one gigantic art form and that's something that I thoroughly appreciate. It's a different form that people don't uh, typically see unless they get into the kitchen. We typically are not looking for somebody that has a lot of experience. Uh, we're looking for people that have the passion for cooking. Uh, that passion for cooking will 
will translate into success through our school. And from that, we build and build and build until they graduate. This is amazing, guys, because just now, if you have a passion to cook or you want to become a manager or your own boss, this is great experience and all what you can learn. So thank you so much to the Culinary Institute of Virginia. Yes, great. smelling aroma of <laughs> good, like just watching that entire segment, you know? Mm, yummy. And also don't forget next week is a Norfolk Restaurant Week, the January 17th to the 24th. You can enjoy three course meals at a variety of restaurants. For $12, you can enjoy lunch. And for $25 or $35, you can enjoy dinner. So this is great news also. Absolutely. And if you want to check out Restaurant Week in Virginia Beach, the dates for that are January 31st through February the 6th. And they have the same type deals there. Um, and I'm sure you can go to the website to figure out more information about all the restaurants. Yes. <laughs> cool. Yummy. Yes. Yummy. Food is a universal way to share love and joy in times of need. Our next guest is here to tell us more about Lasagna Love, a movement of mamas helping other mamas and daddies. Please welcome Sarah Buck. Hi. Hey. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining us. So tell me, how did you find out about Lasagna Love and what made you decide to get involved? Well, the power of social media introduced me to Lasagna Love. A friend of mine that I interact with on Instagram posted a picture of she and her husband making lasagna and um, donating it to a family in need in, in the area. And I immediately said, that is so cool. How can I do that too? So um, I just reached out and she shared with me the organization Lasagna Love. And uh, that day I signed up to be a lasagna mama. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and Sarah, you, 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 you <laughs> yeah, I found it like I'm laughing saying it, but as one of many lasagna mamas, <laughs> um, you, you actually made your first delivery right before Christmas. What was that like seeing the looks on the family's faces? I did. I did make my first delivery and that's that's been my first and only so far. Um, I am actually um, patiently awaiting my next match. Um, but, you know, delivering a lasagna to somebody may seem simple to me, right? I mean, I was making lasagna for my family, so I just doubled the recipe and made a second one. It was no big deal. Um, but to this family, it was huge. Um, you know, part of the process is reaching out to the family ahead of time and arranging a time to drop off. And especially with COVID, we're, um, we're being very careful to have contactless drop off. So, you know, reaching out to the family and just saying, hey, I'd love to come by. When's a great time? Can you put a chair out on the porch? Or, um, you know, how would you like me to deliver the, the lasagna? And um, it, 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 the, the feedback from the family, um, just the how grateful they were mm -hmm. that someone would take the time to do this for them was just overwhelming. Um, you know, not only was the family hit hard by um, uh, by COVID, um, but the, there was also a medical emergency in the family, and um, it, this was just really helpful for them. And it, and all it was it was a lasagna, and um, it was super easy, super easy to do, and it just it, very heartwarming. <laughs> Yes. First of all, thank you so much for what you're doing, because I think it's incredible, uh, amazing. And lasagna is one of my favorite uh, dishes. You know, like I love lasagna. Uh, how can more mamas and papas get involved in this movement, Sarah? It's really easy. All I had to do was go on to lasagnalove.org and fill out a questionnaire. And I just signed up. Um, there's also a Facebook page. Once you sign up to be a lasagna mama or a lasagna papa, you can join a closed group of other people that are doing this across the country. And we share recipes, we talk about our experiences with the families, and it's really just um, really cool to be part of such a huge community of people who, um, that picture, golly, that family is doing great things. And a lot of families involve their children in it, so they're really instilling philanthropy and giving back into their families, which um, is really important for me too. Oh my God, look at those trays. They look so delicious, right there, the pictures. <laughs> yes, sir. are there like uh, uh, special recipes or secret recipes that other people <laughs> use or is there just a, like a cookie cutter recipe that they want you to use? 
Well, it's not, uh, no secrets, um, but really any recipe that you'd like to use is fine. We have some families that uh, will do, we'll mix it up a little and maybe do like a chicken and broccoli and rice casserole, anything that's easy for the family uh, to eat. So, you know, we start off with lasagna um, because it's it's simple. Uh, like Patricia said, everyone loves lasagna, <laughs> right? Um, but there are, there are ways that you can um, make them for, families that are vegetarian, you can use your own secret family recipe, you can do every, anything you want to make it special and make it special for the family that you're cooking for. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was asking because I know a lot of people, you know, like they're going vegan and, you know, mm -hmm. and they have a different lifestyle. So that is definitely a good information for the viewers. Yes. Yeah. Actually, one of the, my favorite, it was a spinach lasagna. You know, this delicious. Well, I actually pure, I pureed spinach and zucchini and put it in my sauce because one of the oh. things they said was that it's really great for you to be able to sneak in nutritious foods into the lasagna because sometimes these families aren't getting um, getting that type of, of nutrition in their in their diet. So I did it and I wrote it on the ingredients and the family was funny. They said, we couldn't even tell there was spinach and zucchini in it. And I said, well, that's exactly the point. <laughs> That was a good trick right there. Like, if they don't like it, you can just put it there. They're not going to notice that it's a spinach right there. Yeah. Yep. yep. And I was going to ask about dessert lasagna, but I guess that's not a good idea. <laughs> some, some, some lasagna mom is throwing extras, and that's always nice for the family, too. So they'll take dinner rolls or a certain dessert, too. Awesome. Right. Well, we certainly thank you so much, Sarah, for taking the time to stop by. And thanks for doing good in the community. Thank too. Well, thank, thank you. you. It was so nice to spread the word. Thank you. No problem. Now, when it comes to spreading the word, we're spreading love and food and helping each other. It all sounds like music to my ears because up next, we got music from Bree New Moon. So stick around. We got more coming up next. <laughs> 